Hey guys, welcome to the third video of creating your own custom activities. So in this video, we are going to practice another activity. Just like the previous one, create workbook, we are going to copy the read range activity as well. So I have created the first snippet, the basically the first part, first half of the code, which you might have learned by now. Yes, that is fetching the in required input from the user and giving an output variable. So you can see the code first. Initially, we are fetching the file path. Then we are getting the sheet name. And also we have uh, also declared a default name. Like by default, uh, a sheet one should be given as an input to the user. If he or she wants to change, they can do. But if they don't want to give any name, then sheet one would be there by default. Similarly, the range also has a default value that is A1 com column B2 same as the read range activity that we have seen. The interesting part over here is this new var output variable type that we are using. So instead of string, now the out argument is system.data.data table and uh, we are called as output DD. So the idea is that we are going to read the Excel uh, for a certain set of range and then store it in a data table variable. That's how we know read range works. Now, it's time to create our execute for method. So as you have learned in this, whatever we write here in this execute method would be the actual part where the, the process will take place. Now, unlike the before, now we are going to follow another, uh, another good practice that is use of try catch. So the best thing is that uh, we use try catch generally because it's not, we are not sure what the user might enter or there could be a situation when your code might fail or there's some error in your code. So it's always a good practice to enter your code within a try catch block so that any error that may come would be easily save your bot won't fail, your activity won't fail, and it will pass on the error to the user. So he or she understand where the thing might be going wrong. Even as a developer, that will help you to debug your code. So moving forward, I will just fetch the input variables from the user. So I will create a string file path variable. Let's call it file path. Um, what's my variable name? That is file path dot get context. Similarly, let's fetch the sheet name as well. and the range. Okay, I have got the input. Now, the main part of this video, that is how to save the data that is read from an Excel to a data table. So uh, let's write a comment, insert data into data table. Comments are really important. Now I will create a variable that helps me to create a connection with the micro, uh, database. So for that, let's write system dot data dot OLEDB dot OLEDB connection. Let's see, it should be here, right here somewhere. I will copy this as well. Now I will call it my connection equals to new and paste the same code now i need to pass on some parameters first is provider so my provider would be microsoft dot ace dot oledb dot 12 dot zero dot com uh, semicolon and then i need to provide the data source now here this data source is the actual file path where the Excel is present. So I will use the variable over here that we have created. And again, concatenate in the string. Here, if you can see there is a single, the file path is uh, stored within single queues. Okay. Next, the file path is done. Now I need to add another property that is extended properties of Excel 
that's it and a semicolon at the end so this line will create a connection now here uh, the thing to again note is that we are using microsoft.ace driver so if you don't have the same in your system you might want to use different driver or you can just go to microsoft website and download the same microsoft access database engine 2010 this is what i'm using okay so we have created the connection now we need to create a connector one which will use this connection to uh, fetch the data do any perform any action on this data so i will again write system dot data dot oledb dot oledb adapter i guess that was oledb data adapter yeah and let's call it my command again same practice copy the same first one and again new paste now here a simple select query is required which denotes that what i'm trying to read so that would be select asterisk that refers to all select all from now from where i want to select i have got the excel file uh, location i want to give the name of the sheet from which sheet i am reading the data so that is my sheet name then again a dollar the dollar and uh, the dollar is basically a uh what i would say is it splits between the sheet name and the range like before dollar we write on from which sheet we want to read the data and post that we write what is the range that we we are reading so that would be range then let's just close everything and pass on my command sorry it's my connection yeah so that is done we have created the command now we have got the data with us that we need to add to the data table so i will just write another command my command dot table mappings dot add add a table let's call it test table okay so this is uh, within the my command adapter itself this is internally and what i'm creating a table a type uh, mapping of type table we call it test table now let's create a data set system dot data set and i will call it dt set which is equal to again the same thing so what is the data set data set is a collection of your data tables so multi, uh, like a array is a collection of strings similarly a data set is a collection of data tables now we will fill this uh, data set with our data and the final command is to create our own data table let's call it dt1 and assign it dt set dot tables and assign it to zero if someone might have worked on using ai center to extract data from um, documents from pdf or to excel you might have noticed a similar pattern of how we actually get fetch that data so this kind of logic is also utilized over there so through this command i have i am been able to save that data to the dt1 variable now some important things that is close all the connections as mentioned earlier in the previous video everything every connector that you make outside of the code should be closed once your code is complete so my connection dot close and finally let's assign the output back to the user so that would be 
our variable name is output dt dot set context comma dt1 that's it now the only last thing again left is our catch block what if the above code faces some kind of an error so for that system dot exception of type e and i just want it to be written in my output panel so system dot write line exception and e dot message so this way i can uh, my code will not fail and it will also let the user know that what is the exception that's it since no issues are found that is our code now as usual we can just go to debug uh, sorry go to build and rebuild the solution while it is being built i will also open the nugget package explorer so the package is ready mm, let's open a local package our pa earlier package name was starter i guess let me check so it's starter package dot dll i believe it must be this one first activity okay so now what we can do is i will remove this for now you can simply create a new package for you and now just click on this add existing file now here i can copy this path okay so our names is a starter package that first activity is built here also it would be same we can add another description uh, like a description could be something like a free range activity the version i would like to give it 1.3 author would be myself okay so that's it now i will just go over here and save as okay okay it's far easier to create a new one so i will add <clears throat> so our package is built i will open the nugget package let's open the previous package um i'm not sure what the name was it could be the starter package so i will choose the latest one yeah seems like that i will remove this for previous file and add a new existing file if your nugget package explorer is open already while you are building the package then your uh, this file will be deleted by itself now we are supposed to add the dll file over here let's change the version to 1.0.2 and add update the description that is added an activity to read workbook okay save and then we are going to save as starter package 1.0.2 so that's it guys our package is built 
Now we can simply test it out in our UiPath Studio. So now let's remove the previous activity and we will just go to manage packages. And if we select our old activity, it's learn custom activity. It shows that an another update is here. We will update it and save. So the activity is added. Now, if I go down and choose my starter package, first activity bit, I've got the third activity created by us. That is the read range. Let's select it. Now, as you can see, the default values that we had given is here popping up. Now, if I want to give the workbook path, let's give it. I will go to my desktop and let's select this file and copy as path. To create the data table variable, I will simply press Ctrl K and create a DT1. Now, um, what we can do is let's create an output data table variable. This activity we are going to use to see what is coming in our DT and create a message variable. Finally, let's use a message box to test out our activity is working properly okay but i'm not sure if the sheet name is actually sheet one so what i'm going to do let's check it out and later maybe we can build some activity like get sheets as well so the sheet name is test okay so that's what we are going to give it instead of sheet one now we will write it over here test so let's run the bot to test if the activity that we have created is actually working or not so the bot has started and read the table successfully it has given me the a1 to b2 that is two rows name employee id Piyush Agarwal, and the email which was in the excel so that works, uh, that was great. So hope you guys liked the video. You were able to understand how to create your own read range activity. If you, if any one of you want the actual code, which is being used in this uh, particular playlist, what you can do, you can go to my GitHub account. I will share the link into the description. That would be way faster. And you can use it, learn it and Try to implement your own correct um, activities. Hope you uh, do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I will try to add more content to this playlist for your own practice. See you guys.